Okay. Hey, no one talk. No one talk. Okay. Um, you're being recorded today, by the way. You get the privilege of being the video today. Um, yay. Um, yay. That, see, see that louder. Everyone, you have, you have a very distinct voice. Are you talking to me? Yes. <laughs> Wait, what did you want me to say? Perfect. Now we know James is on the video. Uh, um, here are James's voice. Yeah. All right. It's the funniest thing that has happened to me in all my years of teaching. It's not the funniest, but it was a funny thing about video. I don't know if I told you this, but um, I have a habit of whistling to get the class to come to you know, pay attention. Yeah. Is that right? I tell you what happened in the video one. Yeah. 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 Good. All right. Moving on. So I told the police story. Ali keeps telling me that Ali's not quite awake yet this morning. But Welcome. <laughs> All right, it says we're supposed to approximate uh, this integral. Uh, something I don't know they emphasized enough last time. I'm going to emphasize it heavily right now. Test four will take place mid-January. It will be worth, like all other tests, 100 points. Uh, however, it will not be multiple choice. It will be written. There will be 10 questions. That's it. No pressure. Hey, listen. So spread amongst the 10 questions, there will be what I call 25 AP points. So to get us to 100 points, I have to triple these. So think of it as being 75 points. And then as long as you take the test on time, I give you 25 free points. Okay. So that means, hey, that means for every uh, point that you, like every mistake you make, you lose three points as long as you're taking the test on time. Take the test late, for any mistake you make, you lose four points. How much is this test uh, This one is again 80% of your term three grade. Okay. Um, speaking very honestly, uh, comparing test one, two, and three, uh, this one is on the order of about how hard test two was. Yay. That's how well people perform. <laughs> it's not. It's written, so you're not used to it. It's not. Is it just going to be on the content that we're learning, like from this packet? Yeah, this one we go back to just this unit, and then we go to the. So this is the last unit test. The next test you take after this test will be a full-blown AP test. So this one we take a little bit of a respite from remembering the whole year. Uh, it works out really well. We just focus on this unit and then in the next test we're back to the whole year again. Oh, I'm so excited. I can feel your excitement, James. I'm so happy. <laughs> He's doing that gesture again. Okay. <laughs> hey. Okay. Part of why I emphasize this is as follows. Uh, if this is an exact copy of what you could easily see as one of the 10 test questions, okay? This question would be worth three AP points, hence nine test points. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. You're supposed to compute that integral. That means the very first thing you have to do is write down the integral. Because I've been really pushing you all to never write anything on your paper that is not an equation. Sorry, something equals something. So the first thing you should be doing is writing that integral. And if you forget to write the integral, you lose three points on the test. If you forget to write the integral, you lose three points on the test. Okay, when you see an integral, you should see two third grade level math operations. Hands up, what two third grade level math operations do you see whenever you see an integral? There we go, Sydney. Adding. We see adding. Sydney, what 
perfect for Sydney. No, no, stay with me, stay with me. I was just complimenting because your name is Sydney. It works great. So Sydney, what symbol here is telling you that we're supposed to be adding stuff? The S for some. The S for some. The S for some. Two points for Sydney. So when you see an integral, you should be thinking, I'm going to be adding. And then what's the other math operation that is displayed in the symbol? What other math operation is displayed in the symbol? Let's go, Alec. Nicely done. We're supposed to take a velocity. We're supposed to multiply by a duration of time. Two points for Ali, one if your hand was raised. So we're supposed to find that integral. We're supposed to approximate it. Hands up. Why are we approximating the integral and not actually calculating the integral? Hands, come on. Why is it an approximation, not a calculation for Because we're not going to calculate every single point on the line in that integral. Nicely done. Because that would be an infinite number of calculations. So we're going to approximate by doing some number of calculations, just not an infinite number. Uh, two for Brooke, one if your hand was raised. Hands up. How many calculations are we supposed to perform in this case? Read the words. How many computations are we supposed to be performing in this case? Josh? Four. Four computations. Two points, one if you knew that. So the first thing you should do is go right to this table and start drawing stuff. Hands up, what should I draw? Go, uh, hands up, hands up. Luke, what do I draw? Brackets. Nice. Show me where to draw brackets. So you draw brackets from 7 to 9.5. And not wrong at all, but I prefer we talk about the time. So it's from 0 to 10. You're good. Keep going. And then from 10 to 20. You're good now. Thank you. Two points for Luke. One if you also knew that. Question. Please. When we have the, what is this called, the equation on the left? Is that what this one right here? Yeah. Uh, you're doing great. Just call it the integral. So we have the integral. What are we trying to find? Like, what is it? Oh, perfect. Um, everybody. Perfect. Here's how you know. Just do a little test. Like, think, okay, I'm going to take velocity. So just give me some velocity. I don't care. Zero. <laughs> Fair. I do care. Um, seven. Seven's great. Uh, units on the on the seven. Uh, velocity miles per minute. Two points for James. Okay, Clark. <laughs> Harley, give me a duration of time. Uh, six minutes. Everyone in the room, two points for Harley. Well, let me just explain. So you do just do a little test, and you say, "Oh, what am I finding?" I'm finding that if the velocity is 7 for 6 minutes, the plane's going to displace by 42 miles. So I'm finding displacement. That's what you do, just test it. Oh, stay with me. You, your question was, what are we going to find, right? Yeah. And my answer was, don't pay attention to the problem at all. Just make up an example. Like, just give me, ignore, ignore the problem, Allie. Give me some example of any velocity. You just dream up a velocity. Ten. Ten, and then give me units. So what I'm trying to teach you is, look, the reason this unit is easy is because you just read the symbols, and they'll tell you what you're doing. So we're going to take 10 miles per minute. We're going to multiply by a duration of time. So give me a duration of time. And give me a unit. So when those two multiply, Ali, what's the result? Uh, 40 miles. 40 miles. So that tells you what the integral is calculating. It's calculating displacement. Does that make sense? Yeah. That answer your question. Two points. This is somewhat related, but what about when the velocity is zero? How would you? 
go back, because this is essentially like going back to F of X or other position graph, how would, is it even possible to find the mins and maxes using integrals when the loss is zero on position So like, you know how you can have a position time graph and know that at a min or a max it's going to be zero on P of T for the the reason it's, yeah, the reason it's going to work is because that P of T is only zero for the instance. So you would just find it, would you like find like, limits? Or well, no, because we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. It, it's going to take a little while to get to where you're going, but it's not going to be a problem. Oh, yeah, you're good. Okay, cool. Okay, back to here. Um, so hands up, what's the first thing I write? Just read the symbols. Come on, hands. What is the first thing I should write? Dylan. Uh, it divides 70 miles per minute. Two for Dylan, one if your hand was raised. Raise your hand you know why he picked seven. What's the reason? What's the reason he's picking seven? Steven. Uh, because it starts at seven miles per minute. That's how fast it's moving at time equals zero. Uh, true. Uh, that reason will fail you though in some future problems. We've got to fix the reason a little bit. It's okay. Uh, what's the reason, Brooke? It says left prime in sum, and you made the bracket, so you take the farthest left velocity value for every bracket. We're paying attention to this time interval. Within that time interval, we actually have three velocities of which we could pick. We're not picking seven because it's at time zero. We're picking seven because it is on the left of the first interval. Okay. Two for Brooke, one if you knew that. So hands up, what do I write next? Come on, everybody, go with me. Don't just watch, Ina. And Ina, why are we writing 10 minutes? So that's the duration of that first time interval. Uh, two for Ina, one for the rest. Uh, please, James, question. Lingering hand, you're good, no worries. Okay, um, here's what I want to do now. I'm going to go practice my seating chart memory. I'm going to go down the rows. I call your name. You either tell me what to write or you just say pass. If you tell me what to write, you get a point. So we'll start on the second row. We'll go card and what are I right now? Plus. Perfect, point. Brooks? Uh, 9.5 uh, miles a minute. And point for Brooke. I think everyone should write the units once because you want to make sure you haven't made an error, that you're getting what you expect to get. After that, don't have to write. Save some time. So point for Brooke. Uh, Josh, you're up. Times 10 minutes. Perfect. Uh, Rachel. Plus. Nicely done. Point for Rachel as well. Let's go to Ella. And then Ellie. Times 10. And then Ethan. Pass. Oh, good. No point. Uh, Anna? Nice point. And then we go to after. And then Abby? Point for both of you. Question? Sweet. Then we write equal. And we cheat because I don't want to do the calculator stuff. Okay, so on test four, here's how it works. If you forget to write the integral, you lose three points. If you don't show each of the four multiplications being added, you lose three points. Please. Do you have to have a label? A label where? Like, do you have to label? Oh, no. Um, two points for Sydney. If you have what you see here, Sydney, you get all nine points. Is that what you meant? Yeah, so you actually will the first Oh, the units, you mean? Oh, sorry. Yeah. My bad, I didn't know what you meant. Um, you really won't lose any points if you forget to put units here. Just I just think it's smart. Is that fair? Yeah. Um, Sydney, if you forget to put units here, you lose three points. Okay. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, for the answer, do you need the approximation equal sign or the actual? Gotcha. 
Um, we say approximate here because we're not calculating the integral, we're approximating it. But these four computations are exactly 234. So that's why that's equal. Okay. Uh, they're a little lenient on that. So. Oh, okay. Okay, next thing. Questions about any of them? Please. Are calculators allowed on uh -huh. test? Test for calculator allowed. Um, okay, another thing you'll get tested on for test four is uh, there'll be questions that will check to see if you understand how to represent these computations visually. So we are not making a graph. We're just making a picture that is a good representation of the numbers. So right here, raise your hand please. There's a way, <coughs> point, there's a way to um, represent seven very accurately on this picture. So I don't want anyone to come to the front but raise your hand if you feel like you could come to the front, pick up the pen, and draw something on this picture that would accurately represent that seven. Waiting for a few more. Just waiting for a few more. So what I'm saying is, if I give you the pen, I'm not going to, but I just want to see if you can do it. You come to the front, take the pen, and you draw something, a line, a dot, a circle, a square, triangle, whatever. You draw something that would visually represent seven miles. Like those specific seven miles. Not just any old seven miles, but those specific. Um, I would draw a point at 10, comma, 7. So 10, comma, 7. Right there? Yeah. Two points for Wyatt. I would not disagree that that's a, a good thought. It's not as specific as I want. Like it's not it's not really as specific as that seven miles. So two points for that. Let's go, Ella. Um, maybe make a point at zero seven, and then oh, keep going. another point at uh, ten seven, and then extend the line, because the velocity is seven miles per ten minutes. Um, that's actually really good. That is really good. That is really good. Two points for that. Um, I'm going to do something, Ella. I'm going to do something that is uh, slightly different, but it really is, I don't know, it's almost exactly the same thing. It's just a little bit easier for people to remember. Uh, I'm just going to draw a vertical line like this from seven straight down because the vertical axis represents miles per minute. So the length of that line is seven miles per minute. Like that line, like that alone, ignoring the 10, ignoring, like you did a good job of kind of combining the seven and the 10. The seven alone is just seven miles per minute and it is occurring at time equals zero. Question, please. Okay, why wouldn't it occur at time equals one? Because the velocity is like seven miles per minute. Uh, it is seven miles per every one minute, but it's that velocity occurs at time zero. Oh, okay. Two point, please. So for the nine point five, we draw a line down. Yep. So for this nine point five, two for Abby, and I go over here like right at ten. That's where the nine point five is occurring. So I draw this vertical line. Somebody else pick up on the pattern. Tell me what's next. Let's go, uh, Sydney. Um, Nicely done. And then Ellie. Uh, you will be expected to do this on the test. Questions? Like, anyone feel like it's not making sense? We're just drawing the numbers, just a way to draw the numbers, okay? New, uh, everyone raise your hand and answer this. How do I represent that 10 over there in a similar fashion? 
How do we represent that 10 over there in a similar fashion? Just waiting for more hands. Waiting for a few more. It's really exactly the same idea. Let's go, Stephen. You draw a horizontal line that is 10 units long. Good, and where do I place the horizontal line that is 10 units long? At the origin. Because these 10 minutes correspond to those 10 minutes. Yeah. That's well said. So two for Stephen, one if your hand was raised. Questions? Now, next thing, go, come on, just want to pay. Next thing, Luke. Um, you draw the horizontal line from 10 to 20. Coloring here is pleasing. <laughs> um, please. Yep. Horizontal line from 20 to 30. Two points. Yeah, it's too easy now. Okay, yeah, James. 30 to 40. Nicely done. That coloring is just peaceful. Doesn't that make you feel good? It's nice. It just makes you feel good. Um, questions? Does it matter where you draw the horizontal line or does it have to be at the origin? For the next thing we're going to draw, it works best to keep it at the origin. Well, keep it on the horizontal axis. Yeah. Two points. Brooke. Why are you drawing the horizontal lines again? Show you in a second. Two points. Okay, raise your hand if you can do this. Seven times 10 is 70 miles. Raise your hand, please. What is the 70 miles representing? What is the 70 miles representing? What is the 70 miles representing? Jay. Distance traveled. Uh, we want to be a little careful. It is distance traveled. No. What was it? No. Displacement. Yes. Yes. And Jay, displacement for what time period? Uh, from zero. Wait. You got it. So. Oh uh, yeah. So from zero to ten minutes. Perfect. Two for Jay. One if your hand was raised. Question. So we keep going here. The 95, just want somebody to tell me what is that representing? What's the 95, James? For our what time period? 20. Perfect. Anybody have a question? Okay. Raise your hand if you can tell me. What could I draw over here to make a visual representation of the 70 miles? There we go. What can I draw? And this is partly the answer to Brooke's question and also Abby's question. What can I draw that would be a good representation of the 70 miles? Yeah. Maybe you could like shade in the displacement of it. So what I do is I remember something I learned, I don't know, long ago. The area of a rectangle is found by calculating, computing, this dimension times this dimension. This dimension times this dimension. So this shaded purple box Say it out loud. What's the area of that purple box? Say it. 70. Yeah, the area of that purple box is 70 miles. Peaceful. Question. <laughs> Very peaceful. Question? I found another peaceful hobby recently. I've been working on this for about three years. I'm no good at it, but it's peaceful. It feels good. Like I have a, it's called a TIG welder at home. And you put on the welding hood and it's like you're just in your own little world. You, you have this little molten pool of steel, but it's cool. It's, like, it's peaceful. It feels good. Tell Schmidt, we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> Come to my garage. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll carve yeah. equations into those. Okay, question. So after doing that rectangle, don't you do a triangle above it? If we wanted to get a better estimate. <laughs> we wanted to get a better estimate. We won't for this class do it that way. But you're right. How many points? Two points. Okay. Look, everyone, Brooke, you good? Okay. Abby? Okay. Um, 
Raise your hand, please. The 70 miles is our estimate for the displacement from time zero to time 10. How would we get a more accurate computation of the displacement for that time period? Hands up. I've asked this before, I'm just asking you to say it again. How do we get a more accurate estimate of the displacement for that time period loop? We um, have more subgroups, so that way we calculate it more often. We calculate it more often. How many new? Point two for loop. Okay, watch me. If we are calculating it more often, instead of 10 minutes here, we'd have like one minute. So the width of my computation would be much narrower. And I would get something like this. I'd still have 7 times 1, but then I would have the next velocity, like, I don't know, whatever it is, like it looks like it's about 7.5, and, and then that would get multiplied by 1 as well. So I'd get a rectangular area that would look something like this green, narrow rectangle. Okay, do this. One means I'm not following. Five means I get that perfectly. Like if I go seven times one, I get the area of the purple rectangle. If I go 7.5, look at the graph, 7.5 times one, I get the area of the green rectangle. This means I understand it. This means I need more time to figure out what the heck we're talking about. Let's write it down, point for the whole room. Okay, I'm gonna take seven, and I'm gonna multiply by one. That's going to be 7 miles per minute times 1 minute. That's going to be 7 miles. Raise your hand, please, and tell me what will the 7 miles represent? Come on. What will the 7 miles represent? What will the 7 miles represent after? Miles per minute. Um, so the 7 is miles per minute. The 1 is 1 minute. So when we multiply them together, we get 7 miles. So what does the 7 miles represent? For what time period? One minute. Zero. For the first one minute, like from zero to one. Raise your hand if that made sense. Come on. Point two for after. So then we do this. So we've got seven times one. Come on, brain. So we've got seven times one is seven. Now look at the picture over there. That's the area of that purple first, per, like this rectangle right here that I highlighted. This rectangle in purple would have an area of seven miles because the height of the rectangle is seven miles per minute. The width of that purple rectangle is simply one minute. That's my representation of that seven miles, the displacement for the first minute. Then I go to the next minute, so I would go like this. This is to get a more accurate calculation. I'd say, oh, now it's 7.5 miles per minute multiplied by one minute. So that means this is 7.5. So I'm just asking it again. Hands up. What is this 7.5 representing? Come on. What is that 7.5 uh, representing, Holly? The displacement after one minute, or after one minute? Uh, really close, let me adjust it just a little bit. It's always for a time period, so it would be the displacement from what time to what time? Close, so this one's from zero to one. So this one's zero to one, this one's, there we go, does that make sense? Two points, how many do? Point. That's the area, hey, that's 7.5 miles, that's the area of the screen, right here. Okay, show me again. Look, oh, go, go. How do you know that that it's at 7.5 at um, from one to two? Uh, I'm just reading the graph and making an estimation. Okay. I'm saying here's a velocity of seven, top of that green seems to be hitting about 7.5. So again, it's just an approximation to say, oh, so for that one minute, saying the velocity is about 7.5 seems reasonable. The next one's about eight. You 
You are correct. Hey, yeah, listen to Ali. This is so you understand an idea. This is so you understand an idea. The next one's going to be 8 times 1, which means we're calculating the displacement for the 2 to 3 minute period now. A displacement of 8 miles. And 8 miles is represented by the area of that red, narrow rectangle. So what I'm trying to illustrate is, if we do the computations more frequently, we get a better estimate. We also get a different picture. Instead of this big rectangle here, representing the displacement, so we, like here, we have this big rectangle that is representing the displacement for the entire 10 minutes. If we do our computations more frequently, like here, we get more rectangles that represent the displacement for each and every time period. Questions? Please. Um, why, why did we start from, in the last one we started it, yeah, in the like, actual problem, we went from, like, I don't know, right? I just thought like that, the sub intervals when we did the actual problem there were four and it only looks like there are three like rectangles oh i just didn't finish drawing oh okay we started talking about the first mm -hmm. and then we just kept talking about it that would be the 95 the next one's 45 yeah So that green area is the 45. And then the last one's 24. So this blue area is the 24. Does that answer your question, Brooke? Yeah. Two points. Okay, the point I'm trying to make, like Ali said, you're not going to do this in a problem, but you do have to understand an idea. Hands up. It's a simple question. I just want to see everyone raise their hand. Which is going to be a more accurate computation of the displacement, doing it four times in 40 minutes, or doing it 40 times in 40 minutes. Point for everyone, 40 times. Look at what happens visually when you're doing it four times every 40 minutes, you get these big, huge blocks, okay? But if you do it more frequently, you get rectangles that follow the curve much more accurately. So the idea I'm trying to convey is this. If we did it an infinite number of times, we would get rectangles that would be so narrow that it would appear we would be finding this area. When we added up all those rectangular areas, we would find this area here. Like we would follow the curve perfectly. So if we could do the computation perfectly, we'd be computing an area that would match the area I just outlined perfectly. Therefore, our 70 miles, raise your hand please, is our 70 miles an estimate that's too large, or is our 70 miles an estimate that is too small? Hands up. Is the estimate too large or too small? Eric? Too small. I'm going to agree. Point, too fair. Give me a vote. One to five as to how well you feel like you're understanding that idea. So five is I understand very well. One is I'm not following at all. So talk to me, Brooke. It's bothering you a little bit. I don't. I don't see how like visually we know that we're underestimated or whatever it was overestimated. Gotcha. Um. So are you okay <laughs> that? The area of this rectangle is a good visual representation of the 70 miles. Yes. And the 70 miles represents our estimate of the plane's displacement for this time period. Good. <clears throat> no one talks so they can hear on the video. Um, are you okay that if we do the computations more frequently, we're still finding rectangular areas? They're just very narrow. 
and so they do a better job of tracking the actual curve. Yeah. And if we made those intervals really narrow, we'd fill in that space nicely. So if we do this method where we're doing it more often, do we get a larger area than the 70 or a smaller area than the 70? That's what I don't get. So you're going to take this area here, you're going to add it to this area, you're going to add it to this area, you're going to add it to this area until this space is full. That's what we're doing here in our more accurate computation. So if I add up all those narrow green rectangles, will that area be larger or smaller than the area that we said was 70? Does that make sense? Yeah. Because that area is larger, that number is going to be bigger. Therefore, that's an underestimate. Is that better? Two points. Show me again. Give me a comfort level. Like zero to five is to this concept that I can visually see that this is an underestimate. Point for the room. Okay, question, Jay. Um, can you explain the expression? This one here? Yeah. So this means to integrate from time equals zero to time equal 40, uh, the velocity multiplied by dt. Two points for j. How many? Two. Uh, raise your hand, please. Is our, is our estimate of 95 too large or too small compared to the actual displacement? Is it too large or too small, bro? I'm going to agree. Point two for Brooke. The word they'll use on the test is they'll call it an overestimate. So the 95 is an overestimate. Hands up. Is the 45 an overestimate or underestimate? Come on. Is the, nine, is the 45 an under or overestimate, Rachel? Over. I'm going to agree. Point two for Rachel. Question? Please. I'm just wondering, because you have two underestimates and two overestimates, do those just like fill each other in? It, reasonably well on this one, you know, because like this shape looks kind of like this shape. Uh, this looks like way too much over to make up for, well, that's about similar. So it kind of bounces out. That's, you'll never be tested on that. Like as long as you can look at this green one and say, oh, that's an overestimate, you're good. Then we'll go to that level of detail. Two points. So it's safe to assume when that rectangle of your interval or whatever, like the displacement, um, when it goes above the line, then it's an overestimate, and when it goes below, then it's an underestimate. Yep. Okay. Yep. Two um, points. It really is that simple, Alex. Okay. So on the test, will they give you that graph to see in the middle of your computation and then draw the line, or will you need to look at the smaller? Let me give an example of what would be more like, so I use this to convey an idea. Let me give an example of what would be a more likely test scenario. Uh, they, would sim they wouldn't give you a picture. They would say uh, f of x is increasing. Okay, f of x is increasing. Then they would say, if you do a you know, Riemann sum and it is a, we'll say a, a left Riemann sum, okay? Will the left Riemann sum be an over or underestimate of this integral? They're going to ask if you're going to get an over or underestimate of the actual integral. So what you would do is you would say, okay, here's my graph. I'm going from 0 to, here's f. I'm going from 0 to 10. And I'm going to break it up into some number of subintervals. But f is increasing, so f's going up. So when I break it up, I don't know, just, you don't have to do very many. One or two is sufficient. So that means, because I'm doing a left Riemann sum, I pick the value of f on the left, and then I have my 
change in x, my duration of time, that makes this rectangle. So is my Riemann sum going to be an over or underestimate? It's an underestimate. That's all it is. You know where it starts because you're doing a left Riemann sum. So you start on the left. Does that answer your question? Okay, go to the bathroom. Thank you. So I'm noticing that it's an underestimate when it's increasing and an overestimate when it's decreasing. Is that like a pattern or is that just a pattern? Everyone listen after me. Everyone listen, listen. There is a pattern for that. It gets mixed in with whether we're doing a left or a right. And so I personally have <laughs> refused to memorize. I just draw a picture. Because I feel like I get mixed up if I try to memorize. Because it's a combination of left versus right, increasing versus decreasing. But you are seeing the correct pattern. So I've just found it much easier to draw a quick picture and then I know the answer. Does that make sense? Good work. Two points. How would you do a middle Riemann sum? So for a midpoint Riemann sum, they have never ever asked you to determine whether it is an over or under because of the ambiguity. So they still don't ask. Point. Go to number five. Sorry, number four. My bad. Four. Okay. Uh, I believe Abby was the last one to get the point for the last four out of them. Okay. So we're on to Kian. So, uh, Kian, this is a test question. What is the very first thing you would predict I would do as I get ready to start putting things on paper to get earned points? Fair, point for that. Uh, Jack, what would be another thing I would do? What would I write? Um, integral, just say integral. Uh, point for Jack. So I write the integral because I know if I don't write the integral, I lose a point. Testing my seating chart memory here. Ali, you're next. What's the next thing I do? Nicely done. I get a two for that. Um, so tell me what to draw, Holly Perlis. Um, a bracket from zero to ten. Keep going. Like me? Oh. Yeah, you're good, Holly. Sorry. Ten to twenty. Point for Holly. So Holly Woodley. Now what? Oh, then we keep going here. So then I go back over here, Holly. What would I write? Holly Woodley. Sorry. There you go. Point for Holly. Now we go to Sydney. Um, 9.5 times. Pause right there. Yeah. And again, I recommend we put in units. What are the units, uh, Sydney? Miles per minute. And Brooke, you're up. Um, 9.5 or 10 minutes. Nicely done. And those 10 minutes, Brooke, are representing what, what in this problem? Say again. An interval of 10. Nicely done. And an interval of 10 from when to when? Perfect. Two points for Brooke. Oh, please, question. Um, so, on the last problem, we did like a, a bell. Yeah. You're good. Approximate. Yeah. Um, for that, but then after the like, computer, we did like an actual exercise. Yeah. Um, so, I'm going to do the exercise. Here's why the integral is being approximated by these four multiplies and adds. <coughs> but those four multiplies and adds are exactly 234. So it's not, I have a three, It's a little weird, it is. So for your answer, could you go like right there? Uh, and they're reasonably lenient on that one. So you could do exactly what I did, you're good. All nine points. It's important. Ah, good job, Stephen. Good job. Point for the O plus. James. Uh, 4.5 multiplied by 10. Point. Test. Plus. Point. Harley. Oh, uh, 2.4. Adelie. Say again. Point. Luke. Plus. Ah, nice. Two points for that. Allie. <laughs> okay. 
Nicely done, Alex. And then we cheat. Thank you. <laughs> and we go to Wyatt. What's the units, Wyatt? Uh, Nicely done. Question? Everyone draw the picture that represents those computations. Go. Draw the picture that represents those computations. Use yeah, use the graph. Can we just kind of, can we do like what, uh, I'm just said it, but they said that we can just like think uh, 9.5 and then like for 10 minutes and then you just kind of draw it like that instead of yeah. like going through all the steps or whatever. Oh yeah, for sure. So it really doesn't matter the direction because it's just a duration. It's okay, no worries. Like A corresponds to the vertical line. That is correct, yeah. I see what you meant. That's a good question. It's exactly <laughs> that was a gift from some students. So. <laughs> quote from General Conference. Um, yeah, it really was. It's like the, spe guidance. the speaker's no, the speaker's crazy. husband's name was Craig, and she was talking about the value of her family, and she actually said, "Life without Craig would not be life because it's her husband." <laughs> some students heard that, and they made me a little sad. <laughs> very generous. So it's very generous. Um, so the shade thing is right here. Uh, yes, yeah, as a teacher, I possess the tremendous power to make a child's life miserable or joyous. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I try to stay on the joyous side, although you know, like, you're not doing very good at it. Throw some shade. I feel like you would have a lot of excuse to throw a lot of shade. Like, uh, thank you. Yeah, like, God bless. Yeah, thank you. I did. That was amazing. I was like, I don't even know. 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 I don't even know
so you should have drawn this. Um, with regard to my comment about joyous or miserable, here's my goal. I cannot change the AP test. Like I have no control to change that. So I really am trying my very best to make your path to the AP test as pleasant as I can, even though it is a challenging path. It just is. So um, you should have drawn this. Raise your hand if you drew that. Raise your hands, please. Who has that on their paper? Two points. Question? Okay, Tess and Allie made the same observation. They noted that when we did a right ream on sum, our result was an estimate of 237. When we did a left ream on sum, our estimate was, uh, come on, come on, 234. That's not very different. And they both noted that you can see visually why. Because as was earlier noted, these spaces are kind of compensating for each other. Like that's too much, but you know, here we didn't do enough and they kind of balance. Here we are doing too much, here we're not doing enough, they kind of balance. And that's why the estimates look pretty good. That won't always happen, it's just a coincidence. So. <coughs> Okay, cool. <laughs> Next one, go to number five. Oh, please. Um, so, Nicely done. Uh, overestimate or underestimate is the word they'll have you use. You're good, no worries. Um, right here, you can answer it. So we're saying, like our computation of 95 as the displacement for the first 10 minutes, uh, that's corresponding to the area within this purple box. If I did the actual perfect computation, I would have gotten this area. So I would vote that we definitely have an over -estimate. Question. Okay, go to five. Hey, hey, listen. Okay, what we are currently discussing has a name. Uh, you're never tested on the name, but I will use it frequently, and you'll get used to using it as well, because it makes it easier to talk about things. Uh, it has a very ominous name. It is named the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. And I call it the FTC because I get tired of writing Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. I hope the sound of the theorem gives a bit of a sense of the importance of the theorem. Uh, here's another way to know that it's important. The AP test is worth 108 points. Uh, I've gone through, as you know, about 15 years of AP testing. I've looked at every question for 15 years. Um, you can guarantee that about 30 to 40 of the points are impossible to earn if you don't understand the fundamental theorem of calculus. Like, just take them off the table. Right? can't do it. Like by comparison, if you can't use the mean value theorem, probably lose about five to seven points. So the mean value theorem is important, but it's about eight times less important than the fundamental theorem of calculus. So questions? Cool. Um, Corinne helped us understand this idea very well because she pointed out the following uh, last time. If I go like this, everyone in the room, hands up. What does that represent? Come on, think with me. Just 
want to make sure you're thinking with me. What does that represent? Hands, come on. What does that represent? Don't overthink it. it shows up in lots of AP problems. James. Like time in seconds. Point, but not quite. What does S of T alone represents time? What does S of T represent? What does S of T represent? Brynn. Like a whole thing? It is a white value, but in this, in, in calculus, AP calculus, it is a specific y value. It is any y value for any given x of s. True. Still not what <coughs> it's not what it will represent in this class. Position. It represents position. If you knew that, give yourself a point. Brooke gets two. So what does that mean? Come on. So this means the position at whatever time you specify. What does S of zero mean? Come on, more hands. Come on. What does S of zero mean? Stephen. Position at zero. Time zero. When time is zero. Yeah. Position when time is zero. How many knew? Point two for Stephen. Position when time is zero. So that's the position when time is ten. Raise your hand. What does that mean? Alec? Nicely done. This is the displacement between time equals 0 and time equal 10. And also known as the change in position for that time. How many knew? Point, two for um, Alec. We learned this symbol. D means difference or duration or change. So if I write this, I'm referring to a change in position. Just like this is a change in position. Okay, so this means change in position. This means change in position. If I divide this by a change in time, now this entire symbol takes on a new meaning. Raise your hand if you know the new meaning of that entire symbol. Come on. What's the new meaning of that entire symbol? Not new to you, but just it's no longer a change in position. It's what, Alan? Just velocity. Just velocity. Oh, just just velocity. velocity. So the change in position divided by the change in time is the velocity. Okay. So this is velocity. And this is what Crane's pointed out. Two for Alley, one for the rest. Now when we are integrating velocity, we're integrating really the rate at which position is changing. We're doing this. And then we're multiplying that by dt. And that's why when we do the multiplication, we get a change in position. Okay, that's all the fundamental theorem says. Right here. That's all the fundamental theorem says. Is that when we integrate velocity, we get a change in position. We get the displacement. Good work. No homework tonight. So don't do the homework. Let's we'll come back and get on Monday.